Hey everyone, so I wanted to make a video today about object pools in Java and I want to do this in the first of a couple of videos I'm going to make about design patterns in Java and I thought this would be a good place to start because if you make a database based application you're probably going to encounter a connection pool at least so um, I thought it would be something that you'll um, run into and probably be interested about so I was just gonna give an intro about what an object pool is and why I use them so <clears throat> object pools are there and I wrote a blog post to accompany this so I'm gonna link this in the video but object pools they're basically a collection of objects and what you do is you create this collection and then you allocate a bunch of objects up front and you pop them into the collection and when you need to use these objects you go ahead and just check them out of this collection like a like a book at the library kind of and then when you're done you give it back to the pool and in this way multiple threads can use these different connections at the same time um, you've got um, you, you're avoiding the initialization of expensive objects now this used to be more prevalent and I've done some game programming where uh, it was kind of like considered a best practice to do object pools for sprites and things. Um, but in modern Java, a lot of times the objects you're using are very cheap to create. They're very simple. Their initialization is not expensive and they're easy to garbage collect. So it doesn't make sense to do an object pool because there are some downsides involved. Um, so the, the, the only time it really makes sense is when your objects are very expensive to create. And um, that's not something that's super common in Java these days. Now, another issue with uh, object pools in general is that typically you're going to use these in a multi-threaded application, and you're going to have to maintain synchronization across the pool because you don't want uh, two threads trying to grab the same object at the same time. That's expensive, so synchronization is just kind of a downside in general to using object pools in a multi-threaded app. Um, finally, the last thing is that there's some complexity in managing an object pool. You have to deal with, you know, getting objects out of the pool, putting them back in, uh, making sure the objects in the pool are still valid. You need to, if they die somehow, like if your connection to your database dies, you need to be checking to make sure these are good objects and that your app is not going to be filled with crud in the memory. Um, and then, so going into more detail about Java, the, the memory in Java, there's something called the heap, and the heap is where all of your application memory is stored, um, or generally most of, your, most of the objects you create as a user, your application memory is stored. And what happens is if you keep these objects in a pool, they're going to always have strong references to them, and they're never going to get freed by the garbage collector. And obviously that's intentional. You don't want them to get freed, but what that does is it increases your heap size in your old generation and that can't be freed and if you don't account for that it's going to make your garbage collection uh, pauses more frequent and um, it it causes a uh, higher CPU usage because you're gonna have a lesser heap to work with and you're gonna get more frequent garbage collection so generally if you're using a pool keep it small and only limited to things you really need it for so when should you use it uh, I do have a list of objects here that you should take a look at for using it for. Obviously the first one is JDBC connections. So database connections in general, they're expensive to create and you want to keep them open to the database because you're tearing down and or setting up a TCP connection to your database every time. So you don't really want to keep doing that every time. You just want to be able to grab a connection, run a query on it, and then give it back when you're done. Uh, threads are also super expensive to create so it makes a lot of sense to use a thread pool so threads are another really big thing to use object pools for. Uh, large arrays, interestingly, are a great idea to use um, object pools with because large arrays, if you've ever allocated a massive array in Java, you know it actually takes seconds. Um, and what you want to do is just make sure your heap uh, can handle the large arrays you're creating. So just make sure your memory is sized correctly. But it actually makes sense to allocate all of these big arrays up front and store them somewhere in a pool maybe because every time you allocate a massive array and just allocate all that memory it could take seconds even 
So you want to avoid those long pauses in your application. Um, secure random and random, these are expensive objects. Uh, secure random actually grabs a list of all the security providers on your system in the constructor, so that's a slow initialization. Uh, DNS lookups, if you ever have uh, looked at a web page load, if you pull up the network tab, load something like CNN, and you're going to look at all the websites it's loading advertisements from, all those DNS lookups are slow. That's why those news sites take forever to load sometimes, just because they're probably doing 10 or 20 DNS lookups. Um, your DNS lookups should be cached, and um, if you've got objects involved in doing a bunch of DNS lookups, it does make sense to pool them. So finally, there are a bunch of type classes of objects that are encoders, decoders, serializers, deserializers. And so I've been reading the Scott Oaks book, The uh, Definitive Guide to Java Performance, and he gave a really interesting example of the zip decoder in Java. Um, it's not actually expensive to initialize, it's expensive to garbage collect because it has some native interface code that uh, is very expensive to free up. So that's kind of an interesting example um, that uh, you should probably use an object pool for. And the other thing you could do for some of these things like encoders and decoders, because they're not thread safe to begin with, like it's not safe to use these across or in a multi-threaded environment, so you're going to have to synchronize them. If you don't want to do that, you can use something called a thread local variable. And that's a variable that's only available to a given thread that you're operating on. And uh, so it makes a whole lot of sense to just create thread local variables for these uh, decoders and encoders. Now, um, I do have an example of a connection pool in Java. I used a library called C3PO. I'm going to create this connection pool. And I have a Postgres instance running. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to connect to this Postgres instance. I have the username and password set up here. I have a database called demos. And I'm going to set the connection pool of minimum connections of five. It's going to acquire five at a time as it runs out of connections. And we're going to set the max pool size to 20. And then once I have that pool allocated, I'm going to go ahead and grab a connection from it. And then I'm just going to finish the app up. So I'm going to clear this out since I just ran this. We're going to run this as a Java application. And you're going to see pretty quickly, uh, yeah, it just ran through. And um, C3PO is printing some info logs out. But it said configuring the pool. Uh, I had this, um, this pool size where I, yeah, so it allocated everything, initialized the pool. I grabbed the connection, and then I closed it. All right, close the program out. So that's just a quick example of, um, and I also have the, uh, the POM that I used to do that. This is just a quick example of uh, creating a connection pool from a library. And this library is an allocating a whole bunch of connections and um, letting you uh, grab them from its pool. So this is uh, just an example of that in Java. and. Um, Thanks for watching. Leave any comments. Thanks.